All right. Good morning, my dear students. Today, we will uh, explore on switch. Okay. So one of the most important uh, devices on the network nowadays is switch. You know, as the grow network grows, the switches also uh, grow in numbers, and uh, we have to maximize the design of the network and uh, switch is one of the backbone of your networks so upon completion of this uh, lecture you will be able to describe what is convergence of data voice and video describe the switch network in a small to medium sized business and explain the frame forwarding in a switch and compare the collision domain to a broadcast domain all right so as i told you the networks nowadays are growing you have a voice over ip you have um, conference okay video conferencing you have um, web data okay you have so many data so this world okay digital world is uh, changing and there are so much uh, demand for uh, bandwidth and uh, so much activity on the local air network okay and this local air network is connected to the another local area network that forms a wide area network connectivity and there's so many demands on movements of uh, data whether it's gaming whether it is um, video conferencing okay whether it's a uh, voice over IP whether it is uh, a simply a uh, sending of uh, text it's changing okay especially nowadays so Switch plays a very important role in this uh, developing uh, net, uh, networks, okay? So, as I told you, information must be accessed from anywhere in the world. If the information, okay, is not being accessed, it's not being shared, that information is useless, okay? If the information is not being communicated, it is useless. So information is very vital and you need uh, a band um, a backbone okay you have of course you have one of switches and routers today we'll discuss about switches and how this is half of your uh, course introduction to routing and switching so from this topic onwards we will explore on switches okay so information must be communicated or else it is useless. Networks must be secured, reliable, and highly available. Okay? So there is so many demand now on the networks. It must be secure. Okay? So since the devices, the end devices is connected directly to the switches, switches plays a very important when it comes to uh, securing okay, the flow of data in your LAN. Okay, it must be reliable and highly available. So switches nowadays, they are never sleeping. 24 by 7, it's always up. There is no point of downtime. I remember when I worked as a network uh, engineer, okay, as a network um, uh, expert, our network is not is sleeping. Okay, I belong to the operations department. Our network is running 24 by 7. I handle routers, switches, servers, Windows base, Linux base. Imagine, and this that these switches, okay, and routers are connected to different banks and different telecommunication company. That is a network that handle. It is not uh, sleeping. All right, it's highly available, and. Uh, from time to time, there is a migration, okay? We keep on changing, upgrading the switch, all right? Because the data is growing. 
all right the activity of the network is growing and it becomes more complex and this net growing networks must be supported by a very uh, secured and reliable and highly available so we cannot rely anymore to the, to the hub hub is totally okay uh, very very few networks nowadays are using hub most of the um, layer 2 device okay of course we don't use any layer 1 device that is hub the layer 2 device instead of using hub we uh, use switches all right so uh, convergence okay is uh, is the ability for you to combine all those different uh, channel into one so you have multiple input into one channel let's say you have video conferencing you have email you have web browsing and you have voice over ip all of this one will be integrated into one channel okay collaboration to support collaboration a network employs convergence solution okay data services include voice system ip phones voice gateways video support especially nowadays we are uh, doing uh, video conferencing okay live video uh, synchronous uh, video so it is connected well at the same time if you are connected to the college the college has its own voice over ip the same line okay that we are using to connect all right to connect to all the students is the same line that we use okay within class to call okay over via voice over ip so voice over ip is maximizing your bandwidth okay maximizing your connectivity within a certain organization let's say for example the university of technology and applied sciences have many campuses these campuses are wired connected to one another okay so since we are using that wire this connectivity we can use as well voice over ip so we can uh, uh, pass the, we, we can uh, use that existing line okay that we connect different uh, servers and computers from one uh, branches to another we can use that existing line to connect all right and um, call via voice over ip as long as we have this uh, voice over uh, phones okay so call control noise messaging mobility automated attendant are also common features nowadays so the key is converging these different types of data okay these different types of um, binary okay uh, inputs into one output all right instead of having multiple connectivity you just use your one connectivity and let all your information all your data all your voice conferencing pass through the same line okay well the benefits of this uh, convergence is multiple traffic only one network to manage okay that is so true nowadays okay especially if you have a branches okay that maximize the connectivity of the wide area network we have to maximize the wide area network connectivity from one branch to another branch okay so no need of calling uh, using your telephone but you can use the voice over ip video conferencing okay uh, paperless connectivity maximizing our bandwidth capability our uh, bandwidth wide area network connectivity from one branch to another branch okay so this is what you call the integrated IT management okay to support this one we need a device okay that is uniquely allows different organization to connect anyone anywhere anytime on any devices securely reliably and seamlessly all right so we have this so-called boardless switch network okay this is designed 
to address IT and business challenges such as supporting a converged network and changing work patterns. Nowadays, some of the people now are working at home, some, okay, it's a mix actually, working at home and working in the uh, on-site and working off-site, all right? So with this, network should support this kind of environment, okay? So we have this, what you call the hierarchical in boardless switch network, okay? So boardless switch network designs, okay, are built upon the following principles, okay? You have a hierarchical, modularity, resilient, and flexibility. So you have this so-called three-tier land design and two-tier land design. So this access layer, okay, so this is where your PC are directly connected, okay? This is where the end device is directly connected. And these access layer are connected to the core or uh, distribution switches, okay? Two tire, so meaning this core and distribution are combined, okay? So you have several access switches, let's say lab one, okay? One switch, 24 PC can be connected, all right? And another lab two, another uh, access switch, okay? Usually we use uh, 29, okay, 60, but this is being replaced, so I'll show you the different available switches nowadays it's developed by Cisco, all right? And you have the three-tire network design, and this is the uh, advisable, okay? Well, for small, medium, you can have this two-tire, but for large enterprise, okay, organization you can follow this access distribution and core of course these different switches okay has different capabilities it has many uh, functions in this kind of switches so this will support the hierarchical this is hierarchical design okay by three all right so imagine this distribution it connects uh, let's say uh, 10 access switches and then another 10 access switches connected to another distribution. And this two, three, four distribution is connected to the main core. This forms a tree, this forms a hierarchical rather than a flat design, okay? Remember the flat design? Flat design, you have switches that is connected to one another, okay? In just single line, which is a worse and bad design okay that's being implemented 20 years ago all right but now okay we are uh, many big companies okay banks are following this kind of three tire design just like in programming you have the multi type programming this is a three tire design okay this will support modularity you can easily add access switch and connect to the distribution resilient and flexible for this kind of uh, design, all right? So uh, let me just uh, show you some of the available switches over the internet, okay? So here, I've just uh, connect to cisco.com and just browse the switches, all right? So our switches are constantly learning, constantly adapting, and constantly protecting build the functional for extraordinary outcomes of your data center, core, or edge. Okay, so this is the new era in intent-based uh, networking. All right, so we have to accelerate Okay, in terms of the frequency, diversity, and impact of disruption. Okay, planning your network will help you respond to any unexpected, all right, issues. So you have several, okay, uh, features and benefits of your switch. Of course, it is, uh, this is just an additional uh, information for you, okay? So this is the different switches all right 
So you have the LAN switches. This strengthen the security and simplify your network. So LAN switches, basically, if you, your end devices, your IP phone, okay, your PC, your laptop, it's directly connected to these switches, okay? So if you have those uh, Catalyst 94 series, 93 series, or the old 2960 series, all right? This supports, okay, these are what called the LAN switches, all right? This is the LAN switches. Now, these LAN switches, all right, will be connected to the core or let's say to the distribution switches, okay? So you have different distribution switches, and then this distribution switches, all right, is resilient, scalable, okay, and highly uh, flexible and highly reliable. So this core, uh, this distribution will connect to the main core, all right, to the main core, this one, the, the center here. This is just like Kuli Alaluma Takbikiya de Ibri, all right? In Kuli Alaluma Takbikiya, we have so many buildings, okay? Building B, building C, building D, and building E, all right? Building D, that's the faculty. Building E, that's uh, IT, all right? Building C, that is a um, combination of uh, IT and business, okay? And then uh, you have building B that is also IT and uh, business and foundation, all right? So imagine there are many computers in those laboratory. So ideally you have one, two, three, four, five, let's say five, five laboratories. This five is connected to the distribution switch, okay? These five rooms here having, uh, let's say 20 computers connected to access switch, then this five access switch connected to the distribution, okay? So the connect, connection between the distribution to the core, ideally, this is fiber op optics connectivity, okay? So this is fiber optics, you understand? So because we want high speed and reliable connect, connect connection between building to building so your main core okay will be responsible for high end okay very fast connectivity all right and this will go outside the building outside the premises the entire organization going to the uh, public network to the internet or going to the branches to other branches okay so in this uh, type of uh, design, okay, this uh, is what you call the hierarchical design. This is the three-tier land design. This is the hierarchical, okay, three-tier. You have the access, your PC, IV phone connected directly here, and all those access switches connected to the distribution. You can have many distribution as you like, okay? Just for example here, you have one, two, three, four, five switches there, distribution switches. All of them are connected via fiber optics connectivity, okay? Going to the core, all right? So here, you have the core switches, okay? The 9600, okay? That is, um, a very powerful, okay, the future of campus core. This Catalyst 96 series switches are purpose built for resilient and scale. They provide comprehensive security, can help your organization grow to a total operational cost build on the foundation of the Catalyst 9000. Okay, this 96 series offers a high and High uh, offer scale and high levels of security when always on on your goal. All right, you can see actually the data sheet of that one. So this is the core. Okay, switches. This is high speed. Okay, let me just give you the check to you the 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 data sheet of this one. All right, imagine 
up to 9.6 terabits per second. So we're not talking about here giga. Giga, the access connect connecting to your uh, LAN switches, all right? The access switch. Your PC connected to the uh, access switch. This PC connected to the access switch. That is gigabit Ethernet, all right? That is 1 billion bits per second. Or nowadays, we have this what you call 10 gig, all right? So 10 gigabits per second. So 10 billion bits per second connected to the access switch. Wow, 10 gig, all right? 10 gig. Your PC, for as long as you have a NIC card that is running 10 gig, all right? And that switch also supports 10 gig. All right, so that is very high speed. Imagine this core should be, okay, more than 10 gig. Imagine, okay, this is up to 9.6 terabytes, all right? Up to 48 non blocking 100 gig Ethernet, okay? Ports, 28 ports, okay? So that is non blocking. 100 gig, all right, ports. Okay, the hard already supports up to 25. Okay, 0.6 terabits per second. Just compute how many is a tera, all right? It's more than billion. Okay, how many zeros are tera? Okay, wired switch capability, okay, capacity. With up to 6.4 terabits okay per slot so this per slot here okay here in the core one slot goes to building a one slot goes to building c one slot goes to uh, let's say building d one slot so each of those slot will have 6.4 terabits per second the unit with the bandwidth is bits per second okay this is terabits wow too much fast all right that is it says there the future of the campus core all right so this is the uh, product specification okay that one seamlessly automated provisioning api driven configuration okay visibility seamless software upgrades and patches patching okay high availability switches supports high ability features okay you have this so actually if you want Okay, if you will be working in the telecommunication company or in the banks, okay, if you will be assigned to uh, review a product, you have to know these things. Okay, I remember when I was a network specialist, all right, we kept on migrating, we kept on uh, changing, okay, we recommend to our clients, hey, migrate to this. So I will review those specification of the newly uh, released switches routers and then i will create a comparison and give them my uh, expert uh, analysis okay so of course there are reasons why you migrate okay why you upgrade your system all right so these are just some of those uh, specification okay so just go through with that you can have as many information that you can have here all right so you can have see as well the physical okay so it is a uh, rack mountable okay you can place this one in the rack okay so there you are all right so that is what you call the switch okay the core distribution okay you just explore to the types of distribution there so what is the role of the switch switch technologies as I told you they play a very crucial in terms of network design
Okay, you can, they are the backbone. Switching allows traffic. You have several traffic activities in the land. Okay, web browsing, data. Okay, uh, video conferencing, that is video. Voice over IP. Okay, so you have to uh, allow traffic to be sent on your switches as fast as it can. Okay, switch learn allows more flexibility, allows more traffic management because you can have your quality of service. It says here, look, look at here in this specification. Okay, then uh, that the specification. Okay, it has the okay quality of service. Okay, uh, I have uh, read that. I have checked that. Let's see. Yeah, this one. Look, superior quality of service. Okay, this switches offers up to 100 gig with intelligent services to keep traffic flowing is smoothly. All right. Of course, you have to configure this quality of service. Okay. All right. So this will support traffic flow smoothly even 10 times the normal speed interesting leading mechanism for marking classification scheduling of delivering superior data voice video traffic okay data browsing on the internet okay downloading voice all right you have voice over ip okay and video traffic at a wide speed all right it's a superior quality of service okay uh, provided by these switches so you have the supports quality of service okay additional security you have so many securities nowadays so i've shown that to you okay so High performance offers uh, secured, okay, connectivity, all right. So IP telephony and uh, mobility services. So you have several switch. This is a fixed platform, okay. Features options are limited to those originally come with the switch. This is fixed, meaning you cannot expand. There is no expansion slot. There is no expansion slot here wherein you can add another slot. All right. If this is uh, 48 uh, uh, ports, that's it. That's only uh, allowing 48 PC to be connected. All right. That's fixed pattern. And you have the modular. So meaning you can add additional slot okay for as long as there is an expansion slot all right so you can add additional card okay uh, the chassis accepts line cards that contains okay the ports okay so these are modular the switch that i've shown to you this kind of switches are modular okay you can add slot all right cards okay additional ports or additional wider network connectivity okay so that is modular so you have fix okay you can add it's not modular you cannot add okay and this one you can add you can remove okay uh, ports connectivity all right so in the old design of uh, if the network is growing okay flat design what they have to do just simply uh, connect one switch to another okay they, they this is what you call the stackable platform okay uh, you can see this one if this is uh, 10 10 10 10 10 uh, 10 port switch so you combine this all of them into one look this is connected to another switch this is connected this one and this connected going there all right all of them are connected to one another okay this provide a one large switch so 40 okay that is a stackable switch okay but ideally 
um, stackable. Uh, it would be better to support this in a hierarchical design. Okay, because this one, if this is not a high speed, it will cost traffic on the network. So switches as a general concept, a switch makes decision based on incoming and destination port. All right, so switch forwards, okay, the frame based on the destination MAC address. All right, forwards the Ethernet frames based on the destination. Why destination MAC address? Okay. So let's have some review. Okay, remember your PC. Okay, what is my physical address? Okay, so here, this is my uh, physical address. Okay, so here, this is my physical address. Okay, this is in hexadecimal. This is actually my MAC address. This is unique. All right. Layer to device, like switch, uses the physical address or the MAC address. Okay. When you connect your PC to the switch, your PC has the NIC card. And in that NIC card, you have the physical address or the MAC address. And switch will get that. Will identify let's say you connect to port one and whatever your mac address okay will be stored in the switch okay so if a data enters port one and it is uh and it is destined to connect or go out to port four having a destination mac address let's say a a a a all right so switches Okay, uses the MAC address okay, to forward the frames. Destination. The router okay, forwards the packets based on the destination IP address. Remember, the router, layer to device, and later you have IP addressing. Okay, router use the destination IP address. While on the switch, he, this is a layer 2 device, although we have a layer 3 switch. Okay, we'll discuss on that. Okay, so layer 2 switch basically will forward the frames because in layer 2, the type of unit there, the frames, is what you uh, the data is what you call the frames. In there, let, layer 3 is packets, all right? So switch skips the table, okay, that is. Uh, this MAC address table to determine how to forward the traffic throughout the switch. So basically, this is a general concept of switch. Ingress incoming and the destination port, okay, you will keep all those uh, physical address, MAC address, okay, you will have a port one corresponding to MAC address of that particular device, let's say the PC, or uh, port two, and let's say you connect your IP phone, there is a MAC address of that as well. Okay, so dynamically populating a switch MAC address table, the switch must first learn which device exists on the port. Okay, and transmits the frame. So it builds the so called MAC address, okay, that is content addressable memory. All right, come mapping each device equal to that particular port. Let's say port one, the MAC address is A, 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 okay? A colon, A colon, okay? Remember this format, okay? A does, B does, C does, okay? A, C, all right. So COM is a special type of memory used in a high-speed searching application, okay? Information in the MAC address table is sent through uh, use uh, is used to send frames okay when the switch arrives in an incoming frame with a mac address it is not found in the com then it floods to all port okay remember this if this incoming frame okay on that switch 
okay, with the MAC address, is not listed, okay, on the uh, com table. So the switch will what will do a broadcast. He will forward it to all ports once, but not to the one which received the brain, okay. So he will forward to all ports. This is dynamically populating the MAC address table. All right. So switches subtly. So when he read this uh, destination MAC address, okay, he will use different forwarding methods. Okay. Basically, you have two. You have stored and forward and cut through. Stored and forward switches receive the entire frame entire frame and computes for the error this is what you call the cyclic redundancy checking all right if the crc is valid the switch looks up the destination address which determines the outgoing interface or the outgoing port all right the frame is then forwarded out to that correct port let's say it enters the one port one and the destination is actually port four so stored Receive the entire frame, okay, and then it computes for the error and then forward it. However, this cut through switch forwards the frame, okay, before it's entirely received. This one, it receives the entire frame, so it's totally different here, okay. At the minimum, the destination address of the frame must be read before the frame can be forwarded, of course. He cannot forward the frame if the destination is not being read. Once it's read this one, he will forward immediately cut through. Okay? Stored forward. So the difference there, the stored and forward allows error checking by a frame check sequence. Okay? Perform auto buffering. All right? And slower forwarding process. Okay? Stored and forward switching. Okay, so you have this, this is your, um, let's say this is the frame, okay, you have the preamble, destination MAC address, source MAC, okay, and then you have the frame check sequence, all right, so that is your frame header, okay, this data link, and you have the um, network layer and the transport header there. Okay, the sword forward switching entails the receipt of the entire frame that is about 9,200 bytes for jumble phrase before forwarding the decision. Okay, so 9,200 bytes for jumble frames. Okay, before forwarding. So this one, he will be relying on the destination check. Okay, there is a checking for error then forward if there is an error then forward this one however for check uh cut through there is no checking of errors once you receive the destination you can forward okay allow switching forwarding about 10 microseconds no automatic buffering all right in this case it is very fast all right so here you just have to know the destination map and then forward it there's no frame check sequence frames can be forwarded as soon as the destination media access control address okay the physical address is received all right so what do you mean by this collision domain what is this broadcast domain okay Take note of this, my dear students. This is a very, very important concept here. Okay, so collision domain is a segment where devices must complete to communicate all ports. Okay, collision domain is a segment where devices must compete to communicate all ports of the hub belongs to the same collision domain. So meaning, all the ports in the hub, so if you have a hub of uh, 24 ports, all of those ports belongs to the same collision domain. Okay, however, for the switch, every port 
of the switch. Every port, not all ports, okay, that's for the hub. Every port of the switch is a collision domain of its own, all right? So if you have a uh, 24 port switch, all of those 24 ports has its own collision domain, all right? Okay, collision domain. So meaning it is these devices must compete to communicate, okay, because of that collision domain. A switch break the segment into smaller collision domain easing the device competition, all right? That is collision domain. We'll have an example, all right? What is a broadcast domain? A broadcast domain is the extent of the network where broadcast frames can be heard. Okay, it switches forward broadcast frames to all ports. Okay, remember that. Switches forward uh, broadcast. Remember, if the um, if a MAC address enters a switch and it's not listed there in the COM table, he will forward to all port. Okay, switches forward frames to all port. Therefore, switches do not break the broadcast domain. It's one big broadcast domain. All port and switch is the by default belongs to the same broadcast domain. All right. Okay, the same broadcast uh, domain. Okay, if two or more switches are connected. Okay. Um, Two or more switches are connected. Broadcasts are forwarded to all ports of all switches except the port that was originally received the broadcast. So if two or more switches are connected, it will form a big broadcast domain. Okay? Let us simply have an example on this. Okay? Uh -huh. All right. So I have drawn here. Uh, this is a router. Well, actually, a router breaks the broadcast domain. Okay, this is a switch, switch and switch. Okay, how many collision domain here in this big drawing here? How many collision domain in this big drawing? Okay, remember, router breaks the broadcast domain. So, how many broadcast domain? So you have, since this is a router, if this is a switch. Okay, if this is a switch, okay, if this is a switch, all right, if that is a switch, let me remove that. If that is a switch, I'll just make this one as a switch, okay, if that is a switch, let me make this one as a switch. Okay, switch to switch, cross over. Okay, let's make this one first a switch. All right, so how many collision domain? So we have said, okay, switches, every port on the switch is a collision domain, every port. So, in this case, this switch, this switch, there is three ports connected. One, two, three. So, how many collision domain? Uh, collision domain for this? One, two, three. Plus this switch, you have one here. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are three switches. Okay. So, one, two. So, this is one. Two collision domain, three collision domain, four collision domain, five collision domain, six collision domain, seven collision domain. So total here you have seven collision domains. Okay, so. seven collision domain all right here but if i replace this okay i want to create two broadcast domain okay by the way what is the how many broadcast domain here 
Okay, remember. Okay, broadcast the main switches for the frames to all ports. Therefore, switches do not break broadcast the main. Switches do not break broadcast the main. All ports belongs to the same broadcast the main. So this is switch, switch, switch. All of the port belongs to this. To the broadcast domain. So this entire picture here, network topology, is one big broadcast domain. Okay? This is one big, okay, one broadcast domain. So you have seven collision domain and one broadcast domain. Okay? We have said every switches belong. Every port on the switch belongs to the same collision domain. All right? Okay, has its own collision domain. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this uh, switch, okay, all ports belong to the same broadcast domain. So all of this, whether you connect one switch to another switch, it forms one great boss casamine. So if this PC here is infected by a virus, he will just simply forward it to this switch and this switch will forward it there to another switch. It will not break the broadcast. What makes the broadcast domain? Change this switch here, this middle switch, change that one, and Okay, use a router instead. Okay, in that case, okay, you will break the broadcast domain. All right. Okay, you break the broadcast domain. So how many broadcast domain now? So this is one broadcast domain. So if this PC is infected by virus, this PC, PC six. It will not pass through that router goes here, no. It will just be here within this switch here. Because the router break the broadcast domain. It will not pass through going in that other network. Okay? So there is two broadcast domain. Now, how many collision domain? So, in this switch, every port is a collision domain. One, two, three, four. Plus on the other side, one, two, three. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, still seven collision domain. All right? Okay, so you have every port on the switch. One, two, three, and this one as well. And then one, two, three, four, four. Firstly, is equal to seven. So in this case, you have seven collision domains. And two broadcast domains. All right, let's have another example. All right, you're here, you got a hub. Okay, this you get a hub here. Remember the hub? Okay, remember the hub? All ports of the hub belong to the same collision domain. Okay, so how many collision domain here? Tell me. Tell me how many collision domain. Tell me, class, how many collision domain here. So this is a switch. This is a switch. This is hub. Okay, and this is hub. Okay, let's add another PC here. Okay, here connected to the hub. Let's add another PC. All right. So how many? This is a hub, huh? This one is a hub. Okay, hub, hub, two hubs here. Okay. Okay, that's better so that you can see it. All right. Now, how many collision domain? So, since this is a switch here in this side, you have one, two, three. Okay. And is this hub? Has its own collision domain? No. All ports in the hub belongs to one collision domain. 
this hub is connected to the switch so meaning this one is one collision domain that is connected to the switch and this hub with two pc here is still one collision domain because all of the ports all ports of the hub belongs to the same collision domain every port of the switch is a collision domain of its own okay so you have here one it's connected to the switch two three and four okay so here you have seven collision domain all right how many broadcast domains since this is a router you got here one this side one and this side two so you have there two broadcast domain okay two broadcast domain and okay seven collision domain you understand this class all right this just to explain this collision domain and broadcast domain all right elevating the uh, network congestion okay this will help the switch congestion by segmenting your LAN okay separate collision domain that's what we have done okay remember what we have uh, done on that drawing okay instead of having a switch here you add router okay to break that collision domain okay it will separate the broadcast domain actually providing full duplex communication within devices you know full duplex both side of direction okay receive transmit both sides simultaneous okay taking advantage of high port density okay buffering large frames employ high speed port that's why you need okay uh let's say in access you can have gigabit switch or 10 gigabit switch okay taking advantage of the fast internet switching process and having a low per cost port all right so in summary we have uh, explored to the basic functionality of a switch all right as i told you switches are used to connect multiple devices together on the same network okay it is designed used to design a network LAN switches are responsible for directing and controlling the data okay flow at the access layer to the network switch resources all right so since so we are using uh, cisco okay switches okay it's actually a, a very uh, highly reliable switches okay nowadays to support okay high speed okay and uh, security requirements of the organization okay as i told you the high demand of the network nowadays video conferencing video downloading okay gaming this is high speed all right it requires high speed your switch must support this very highly active okay traffic LAN. okay so we have just uh, discussed the three layer okay hierarchical design we just explore to the switches different switches just go through uh to that uh, switches all right go through to these types of switches here explore check specification okay okay so check that one and uh, you can have us you, you you can have a uh, thorough investigation of your layer two layer three switches okay so i just explained to you how fast is this okay imagine every port every slot 
Okay, let's say I slot. Let's say there is 4 points there. 6.4 terabits per second. So powerful. Okay. So with that, see you next uh, in the laboratory of this course. Okay. So enjoy the rest of the day. God bless you all. All right. For more reference, you can go to this book, okay, or to this book. This book, okay, the older version of this is available in your library, okay. So if you have a chance to visit, you can borrow the book and you can simply explore it, okay. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you all.